Hey YouTube, what's up you all? Kyle here, or Epic, with another tutorial for you all this week on the really fun trick that everybody does in videos nowadays where they just do that really easy looking Webster off of a ledge. So, what it looks like, pretty fun, very simple. If you have your Websters and your side flips down, then this is gonna be pretty easy to learn. But what it looks like is where you have your both feet on a ledge and you're either gonna go one, two really quick or you're gonna have one foot up and you're gonna pop it and then plump yourself into Webster. So it looks like this, like that. And you can do Webster or a side flip. I do side flip just because it's more natural for me, but some people like to go Webster. So whatever you do is up to you. Just change the momentum. Just make sure if you're going to go Webster, follow through straight. If you can do a side flip, I mean, turn your body. Pretty simple. Just turn your shoulders when you take off. But it, it's fairly easy to learn, like I said, if you have your Websters or your side flips. So if you have that down, perfect. This is going to help you so much. If not, this may actually help you get them down because of the idea of using the lift and push concept, but also teaching you how to tuck tight because the tighter you tuck in a flip the faster you'll rotate in one spot and that will allow you to finish your flip with enough height still to spot that landing or just control like how you come out of it so keep that in mind while you're doing this so uh, if you haven't gotten your you know Webster's off of ledges and stuff like that I recommend getting those down make sure you're not going too far out a lot of people will do like their Webster's and they'll land way out here and I'll be like, well, look at where you landed and then look at where you took off. That's all this extra space that you could take your energy and you could send your momentum up instead of out. So if you find yourself landing really far from the ledge, try landing closer and closer to it. That way you can focus on going up because it's all mental. It's all mental. A lot of people think that they're going to hit the wall. So they naturally make their body go out further. But in turn, that helps. I mean, that doesn't help their rotation of their foot. They actually under rotate. That's why they land on their feet and then hit their ass and they land on their back or they just don't land it clean in general so figuring out how to control where you send yourself is extremely vital when you're doing it I recommend having a strong leg in front you don't want to have your toes hanging off like this you actually want to be nice and firm on it you can have your the toes barely hanging off the ledge if you want to I don't recommend it I like to have my foot fir like planted firmly on the ledge and you can do this with one two where you kind of go really fast lift of the back leg and push of the front one or you can do where you have your leg in front like here and you get that pump action going. I'm gonna show you guys from the pump part because the real quick lift and push is actually pretty easy, but the more challenging one is where you get that pump down and that's where that sweet spot comes in handy that'll teach you how to Webster off of anything. Whether it's a curb, whether it's a big thing like this or a moderately a thing like this, or it's a huge, huge drop, it doesn't matter too much. As long as you have control over that first intro motion, then you have a good understanding as to how to rotate and tuck when you're in the air. So, what I recommend doing is starting here, getting this leg up, you gotta find that sweet spot. Now the sweet spot has to do with your center, and I mean your center of balance. There's a straight line right where you take off. If you go, if you tuck too soon, you're gonna flip backwards or come straight down on it. If you tuck too late past your center, that's when you shoot out, when you under rotate. So you gotta find that perfect spot that sends you straight up, right on your, uh, your, at your center of balance. That way when you pop, all you gotta do is tuck and rotate and you'll be naturally right where you wanna be. You'll rotate as tight as me, depending on how you tuck. If you tuck tight, you'll spin fast. You'll rotate quickly in the air. So think, keep that in mind. Pop, tuck tight, plant, land the feet. When you're doing it, um, I recommend focusing on your front leg. Everybody forgets to do that front leg when it comes to like Websters and side flips and a lot of stuff. They get that lift and push concept down in their mind but it's hard to apply that to their actual physical motion, their actual body. So when you do it, make sure you get that lift just fine, but don't forget to push off that leg. If you don't get a good solid pop, then you're just gonna go straight down. You have to focus on bending that front leg when you're going down. So you're here, as this leg goes to your center, which is where your feet are side by side, as it goes to your center, you get that bend, and then as it goes up behind you, you pop your other foot up. So straight, bent straight figure it that way and if you don't get that full extension of that front leg then it's not going to be very high and it's not going to be as far out as you might want it to be so if you find yourself not getting all the way around or not getting as high as you can if you think you need more height focus on the leg make sure you're getting that full extension now that's the legs now the arms kind of does whatever you want them to do some people it's easy so they can just pop it like that and then just grab their knees in the air some people have to use your hands if you are going to use your hands Start with them up in front first, especially if you're learning it. That way you can get this down. Now all your arms do is just throw down 
butt follow through up. So you throw down and pull up. What that does is that makes your arms, your upper body loop your momentum. That way, by the time your arms are pulling up, you'll already practically be upside down. So this motion here will bring your chest up as your legs will go over and then you tuck. So you got boom and then up into a tuck. And then all that together will kind of work into this. Once you drill it a few times, it'll be pretty simple. You just gotta keep drilling it over and over and over. Even if you fall on your ass a few times, if you can muster doing, risking falling on your ass a few more times, go ahead and do so. As long as it's not gonna break a bone or hurt you like really bad. But you know, focus on that landing. The more you drill, the more you drill something, the better you're gonna get because your body will start learning those movements. It'll start getting comfortable with that motion, which will enable you to feel more confident and more in control of that movement, which will help you master it a lot easier. So drill it, drill it, drill it. Don't just try it a couple times and fail and be like, okay, I'm never gonna get this anytime soon. Really focus on drilling it. Figure out that sweet spot. That's really hard to figure out, but when you get that sweet spot, it makes everything so much easier. And you'll feel that, boop, that sweet spot. You don't wanna start with your heels down. You gotta start with your heels up. This is one of those like springy kind of movements. So you gotta rely on keeping your heels up so you can spring off the balls of your feet. So here, down, up, pull up, pop tight. When you tuck or you rotate, just tuck tight as possible. Don't think about bringing your knees to your chest. That's gonna counteract your balance. It's like trying to front flip and then trying to do a back flip in mid front flip. That just doesn't make sense. You stop, stall, and fall. So focus on bringing your chest up. Also, if you focus on your hips or your ass as you're doing it, it helps to think about bringing your ass up and keeping your chest like open and arched. That way your back kind of goes here. That way you can get that snap and pull into that tuck that way that might help a little bit easier and then and you'll feel that sweet spot a lot better that way also control where you send your momentum as i was talking about before if people land too far out or they land too far close or things like that when you start doing it more and more start focusing on where you're going to land so you can pick a spot and be like okay i'm going to land right there and it's all in your hips as far as where you land it's where you throw your hips up in that arched motion that makes your body tuck so when you take off your hips go up and then as you tuck, your body will rotate and you should come straight down in that arch motion right exactly where you set yourself. So gaining that body control might be a little challenging at first, but when you get it down, it'll help a lot of things flow much smoother. That's pretty much it, you guys, for this tutorial on how to do a little pop Webster or a Webster side flip off of like little ledges like that. You can do them off curbs, you can do them off bigger drops. It's pretty easy as far as like understanding how the Webster and the side flip works. So that's why I'm not gonna go into too much detail as to how to do the flip themselves. So if you don't know how to do those, the tutorial links are on the video right now. You can click either of those and learn those movements or the tutorials that I've done on those movements that might help you get those. Then you can come back to here, watch this, and then learn this one. If you guys have learned this movement from my tutorial and it's helped you a lot, please shoot up a video on YouTube and put it as a video response so I can see that my tutorials are working for you guys. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. I really appreciate your support. I appreciate you guys watching this stuff. Hopefully it's teaching you guys a lot. Here's some slow-mos, take great care, and stay positive.